It's been an interesting ride. It's been a very interesting ride back and forth. I just spent some time in school and went back to my master's degree and finished that up last year. And uh, you know, I learned a lot about myself and a lot about what God's doing in my life. But also seeing the need of second generation of pastors, people who have parents who came over from Vietnam. They, I mean, I'm looking at, just so you know, that what, what I'm doing right now, I work with the Christian Missionary Alliance. That's the denomination I'm doing. But seeing how the situation, we have a lot of pastors, about 100 and some of them or so. All of them are in their 40s and above. Um, and the only one who's in their 20s is me. And I'm thinking out there, there's got to be more people. There's got to be more people who are willing to stick their neck out in line and say, hey, I'm going to give myself to God and serve and it's interesting that Oliver said I was single because when I started ministry at 20, um, I knew it. You know, being a pastor, you can't find a woman that easily. Um, <laughs> that was hard. I knew it going in. My dad was a pastor, and so I knew how difficult it would be at a church. And I knew how difficult it would be to be, I mean, find a wife while you're a pastor. And I always thought, you know, pastors come to me all the time and ask me, so when you get married, when you get married, I'm like, I have no idea. Um, uh-huh. And I said, come on, you're getting old, you're getting 30 pretty soon. I'm like, you're finding me. Uh, <laughs> I started to tell them back, I'm like, I don't have the luxury of tricking my wife and marrying her first, and then telling her I'm going to the ministry later, what you see is what you get. So, and their wives just sit there right next to them, like, uh-huh. <laughs> and, so, and that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm really glad to be here, it's really interesting. I, it's just, you know, I just reminded me of a time when I was at a camp one time, and I actually broke it for four days, in the shower. Um, I had a toothbrush and that was good. Uh, so really, this, this is kind of cool that we're actually doing this again. And as I was sitting down there, a song was popping in my mind. And maybe I'll share it with you guys sometime later this week during the, the talent show or variety show that you guys have. But it's great to be out in nature like this, to be out in a situation where you have to depend on that for um, Especially for, you know, we live right now, we don't have water running. I noticed that this morning when I woke up. I'm like, great, I can't shower. <laughs> and we, you know, food-wise, we have to rely on power to kill. Um, we don't have it. But the reality is, as we follow God, as we live as children of light, and of light, the truth of life, the of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Children of light? When I thought about children of light, I was wondering, light, what is light? So now I'm going to go into that a little more. But this morning, what I'm going to talk about is light relying on God. What is light from God? And talk about the story of Gideon. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Now I'm going to tell you this story. I'm not going to read, I'm not going to to read all of Judges chapter 6. But actually, before I go on, I'm just going to do something that we are in kind of a dark room and I was thinking back. And how many of you got more than, okay, how many of you slept 8 hours last night? Okay, let's do that. More than 1 hour of sleep. What? More than 1 hour of sleep. Okay, more than two hours of sleep. More than three hours of sleep. Okay, to go down. More than four hours of sleep. Five hours. Six hours. Okay, six hours of power. Seven hours. Who's the one That's awesome. Well, I'm going to stand up a little bit. I'm going to stretch. Uh, the story was the Persian army was attacking Sparta, 
being the nice of those guys. Absolutely. <laughs> By the way, you guys are watching the workout. It's, it's crazy. But it, they went after 300 elite soldiers going out there with a media of a couple of other people fighting in the street army. And I wanted to show you that story because it was interesting how these guys trained themselves up so well. Uh, they were all about the war. When they were growing up, they trained. The kids went out at seven, or the sons went out at seven to live in the wild to do things. To learn how to, to live for themselves, to fight for themselves. And I've just seen where the United States goes against the wolf and just kills it. You know, and it's like, he comes back and this wolf over, this, this, this wolf over his shoulders and said, you know, all these people start bowing down and then this king. Um, and these guys were elite, they were trained, they were fit. I mean, I watched the movie, I bought the movie actually, because I'm like, I need inspiration to lose a 15 pounds into my craft line. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was thinking, you know, this one would be really good. And I watched that movie, I walked out with so much testosterone, I went to the gym right afterwards, too, and I think I'd be like that. <laughs> but these guys were elite trained, you know, military men, fought some great battles, as you know, they died in the end. But it was a glorious death in their minds. And it was, it was crazy. If you ever watched the movie, it just, you know, it was a crazy job. But the interesting thing is, the Bible has a different story of 300 men. But yet, something totally different. And the story of Gideon. And if, how many of you have heard the story of Gideon in the Bible? Okay, some of you have. Um, if you have time, go home. Not go home. Go back to your cabins. Go back to your cabins. And read it. Check it out. Judges chapter 6 and 7. Let me give you a little history background of what's going on. How much time do I have on this? You can't tell us. Okay. You know, I'll have to give you a little over time. I don't know if you have too much. The story of Gideon and Gideon happened after, okay, let's see, you guys know Genesis, right? Where Adam and Eve came up. You guys know that. You guys know that. Okay, Adam and Eve, you know that story. Um, coming on later, you had Abraham, God was leading Joshua, and they, they went. You know, and also, they went into the promised land after Moses. You guys saw Prince of Egypt, I'm sure some of you have. Which is probably a really bad rendition of uh, Moses and stuff. But still, you guys know the story. Pretty much what happened. Israel came into the land that God promised them they were going to take. Yet they didn't really listen to God and what He told them to do. Just to wipe out people groups there because they would assume it brings them from a certain way or oppressing them. Anyway, the story of the judges came in before, you know, Israel had kings and stuff. So think of it as you know, God using people to help fix back the situation as the country so that the living people could stay. Joshua was one of the guys that got called. The story starts out, Joshua was hiding. Um, he was, you know, getting getting weak and getting chaff out of the wheat. I don't know if you guys have ever seen where, you know, you have to get the chaff out of the I don't know, I'm not a farmer. I've kind of seen it done, you gotta let it fly in the air and all the chaff comes out and whatever's left is what you need. And it was in the in the wine press. So here's Joshua, scared of what's gonna to happen to his life. And God calls him out and says, hey, it's not just one in a nutshell, hey, I'm calling you to lead the nation. And to lead them out of this situation. And I go against the enemies and wipe them out. The story continues on. Gideon had to do a few things before he did this to remove the idols from his house. And he called it out and called a huge amount of people to come help out. And they came with him. And one by one, God slowly pulled them back and started selecting less and less and less. And so on the end, we're going to tell you Now, Gideon, if you read a story carefully, he was scared. A lot of things. This question was, God, I'm nobody. 